na 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 Good morning all. Uh, welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. Brief weather update, grey, dry and warm. So not a bad day all in all. Okay, right, so this is gonna be um, a slightly different video. Um, it's kind of like a, a re review, I suppose, uh, or maybe not actually. Obviously regular viewers um, to Questioning Sense will know that Rich and I are massive fans of Alessandro Gualtieri and we are huge fans of Auto Perez's Burger Musk. Now, if you follow me on Instagram or follow us on Instagram rather, or you know, have watched any of our videos, you'll know that I bang on about it all the time and Rich loves it too. We've both been through plenty of it, plenty of it. Um, but I understand the problem with Burger Musk for a lot of people is it's incredibly difficult to, to smell. Um, <clears throat> Gualtieri doesn't, for Nussamato, I don't even think the Maria Lux, and certainly for Auto Parisi, there are no discovery sets. There's no official samples for it. The only way you can actually get to smell it is if someone gives you some to try or, you know, you get to smell it in store. So, you know, I understand that there's quite a lot of difficulty in people actually getting their noses on it, especially if you live in areas that are, you know, not like London where, you know, we're incredibly blessed to have so many um, perfume stores and niche outlets that carry the, you know, the, the harder to find um, collections. So today, um, what I'm going to do is over the last year or so, um, I think I reviewed Burger Musk probably a year and a half ago. It was one of the uh, first sort of, um, one of the earlier reviews we did on the channel. I've had quite a lot of questions come in to me to, you know, answer, to help people make, um, you know, an informed idea of what they're going to be buying or if they're going to blind buy or stuff like that. And it's always, always a risk when you're blind buying something that's expensive like Burger Musk. So what I'm going to do today, last night I trawled through uh, my social media, my direct messages and all the rest of it. And I've picked up, there's about 10 questions that I've, I've been asked sort of over, over that period of time about Burger Musk. So what we're going to do is we have a little brief chat about um, the perfume. Um, a little bit of uh, talk about the notes, which is quite difficult because it's a Gaultieri and he doesn't release notes. Um, and then I'm going to answer your questions. So hopefully the idea is we have a video on the channel, which is a reference point for anybody with any questions about Burger Musk. Okay, so let's get into it. Here it is. I'm wearing it today. No surprises there. <sighs> Should I spray a bit more? <laughs> Why not? This is something I never tire of doing. Just a little bit, because I'm, I'm covered in it. There we go. Right, let's, let's, that, let's let that settle. Um, and let's have a little look at the bottle. The cap is beautiful. It's like a horn type thing in here. Very heavy cap. Beautiful presentation. Simplistic and perfect. I love the Auto Parisi collection. They're also 50 mil bottles, so you have a slight advantage over the Nussamatos, which are only 30. Okay, Bergamasse came out in 2014. I think it came out with five other fragrances. That was when the Auto Parisi collection was launched. Um, obviously, they've added to it. Um, there's been quite a few more to it, but I think we only have seven or eight in the entire collection now. So it's a relatively small collection. Obviously, you know, Auto Parisi are always going to be linked to Nassimato. Um, Gaultieri's sort of more known for Nassimato and the Auto Parisi collection, I think, are playing catch up in terms of notoriety or popularity. Um, he is renowned for his usage of musk, and the musks in the Nassimatos and in the Auto Parisis are very, very similar. In fact, quite a, there's a kind of like the musks kind of lead this DNA. Um, across both houses so you know it's almost like his signature and the musk I absolutely adore it but it isn't for everybody so again with all of these Nassimatos and Auto Parises you will need to smell them first okay um, the notes are are quite simple everybody just says that this is bergamot and musk and it's not there's a lot more to it than that and I think this comes from the name Burger Musk, which is why people are thinking Bergamot and Musk. Burger Musk is actually, or Burger Mask, Burger Musk, Burger Mask, is actually an ode to a festival in Bergamo in Italy, which is like a dancing festival where people, you know, dance for three days or whatever. They wear masks, so they get hot and they get sweaty. And obviously, you know, Bergamot is the smell of the area. And then the sweaty, writhing bodies seems to make up the, the musk. So that's why you've got Burger Musk. It's not just Bergamot. 
a musk is what I'm trying to say. Now the idea that this, this perfume only has two materials in it is, is not, not on. Um, there's a lot, lot more to it. It's incredibly big and it's incredibly bold. Um, it's incredibly divisive as well because of the musk, which does give a sweaty vibe. But to me, the opening of this is a heavy, waxy bergamot with some orange, but like orange peel underneath it, just to give it a little bit of sweetness. There may possibly be a hint of orange blossom in there, but I don't really want to talk about orange blossom being in it because generally when you hear of orange blossom in fragrances, it's normally quite a light, um, sweet sort of heading into like a floral um, perfume. Bergamusk is not, it's a very heavy perfume. It's not light at all. Um, and then obviously we have some woody elements to it. I think there's some sandalwood in here, possibly some cedar. As it starts to dry down, the woods become much more prominent. But the driver in this is that musk and it is a sweaty animalic musk that combines with the lightness of the some of the citrus and the sweetness of the citrus to create something that's quite unique and quite enchanting this is my favorite fragrance and this is my most worn fragrance it's also my most complimented fragrance by some margin so what i'm going to do now we've had a little introduction into this wonderful perfume um, what we'll do now is i've got the questions written down here so i'm just going to move them over a bit um, i'll answer the questions and then obviously you know you've got a re you know you've got a, a resource there to use should you need to know more about this gorgeous intoxicating wonderful perfume obviously i'm a massive fan so it's going to be a completely biased review because i absolutely love this so much and so does rich okay the first question I, I, that comes up quite a lot is is it a freshie and the answer to that is no it has materials in it that can make it could be considered a freshie but because this is a very dense heavy perfume it is not a freshie at all it does have an airy nature to it in terms of the sillage the sillage pushes right out and sometimes when you know the sillage is out there people will smell it and they will smell the citrus elements of this perfume but as you get closer to skin it becomes much more heavy and much more dense so i would not consider this a freshie at all okay next question can younger people wear it which is one that was asked quite recently and the answer to that is an emphatic yes this is absolutely wonderful for younger people um, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a young person's perfume. I barely can get away with it because I'm getting older and older, but I don't really care about that. I will wear this as long as it's being made. I will, I will be wearing it. It's just, it's lovely. But yeah, if you're a, a, a young thruster, this is the perfect perfume for you. Okay, the next question I get is about performance. Does it last? Yes! Oh, it lasts! It lasts so, so well. It has such good performance. It has massive projection, a huge sillage, and the longevity, like most of the Auto Parasia collection, is really, really long. It just lasts and lasts and lasts. So, in, you know, to answer that one, it really, really lasts. Okay, is it oudy, I've been asked? Uh, no, there may be, bizarrely, a little hint of oud in it as it starts to dry down, but, you know, I've been wearing it for a very long time and sometimes I kind of think there might be a little bit of oud in here and other times I'm thinking, no, there's not. So it, if there is oud in it, it's subtle and it's not um, dominant. It doesn't have any of the awkward facets that people are sometimes associate with oud. So there's no, I mean, the perfume is animalic, but that's the musk. There's no animalic oud in this. There's no barnyard in it. There's no medicinal. There's no blue cheese. There's no whatever, you know, other things people accuse oud of having. So if there is oud in it, it's very, very subtle and it balances out everything else. But I don't honestly think there is. I think sometimes you get the hint of oud, but I don't think there is oud in it. Okay, can it be worn for work was one that I was asked. Now, I don't have a normal office job, so I have no problem at all wearing it to work. I think you can wear it to work if you work in an office, but you have to be a little bit um, cute with your spraying, just a little bit, because it does go an incredibly long way. And my, my concern about wearing bergamot to work is because it has such a, a strong sillage, it's so airy and it does project really, really well. It may be a little bit too much for work. If you are gonna wear it to work, just a tiny spray somewhere because it, it is a room filler and it's not gonna be very fair on your colleagues. Although I think the perfume is wonderful, I understand it is divisive and I particularly don't think it's fair for someone to be sitting next to you with this huge sillage all day at work, if, especially if they don't like the perfume. So yes, it can be worn for work, but very, very moderately. Okay, um, does it lean feminine is another question I've been asked. No, it doesn't. It's completely straight down the middle unisex. If anything, it possibly has a more of a slightly masculine vibe to it. But I think a woman can wear this 
I think a guy can wear this, you know, any age can wear this. It's just a perfect, perfect fragrance for that kind of thing. Um, is it a safe blind buy? No, no, it really isn't. It's uh, completely not a safe blind buy. And the reason I say that is I've had some people blind buy it and they've loved it. I've had people go out and sample it in store and come back and say, God, it's horrible. How can you wear that? But what I will say with Bergamask, um, it's one that you grow into. When I first got it, I liked it. I didn't love it. But then everybody around me kept complimenting me on it and saying, God, you smell amazing. Uh, and then I was like, I, I kind of get it smells nice, but I don't understand why I'm getting such positive feedback on it. Um, and then I realized it's because it's so airy. It changes so much in the air around you. It just, it smells so intoxicating. It's enchanting. It's beautiful. So, you know, that's why. And then obviously you sort of second or third bottle in. It's just, I become completely obsessed with it. Um, and I, I, you know, I can't live without it. But it does, um, it is a fragrance that you kind of grow into. So you won't love it straight away. And, you know, you may, uh, but generally speaking, people have to wear it a few times to get it, to understand it, for it to click. Um, and that, because of that, makes it an unsafe blind buy. So please don't blind buy it. You're gonna to need to smell it first. Um, does it get compliments? Well, I think I've already covered that, but yes, on me, it really, really does. And on Rich, it really, really does. On a few friends, they've all fed back to me and said, look, I can't believe it. People are asking me what I'm wearing. People are saying I smell great. So yes, it is, um, for the majority of people, a real compliment magnet. If you're looking for something to wear to make a statement that people are gonna think smells amazing, Burger Musk is a really, really good choice. Okay. Um, when is the best time of year to wear it? Now, I've had this question actually from a few different sources. For me personally, I wear this all year round. I think it absolutely shines all the time. However, what I will say is when it's really, really hot, there's some weird and wonderful aroma chemicals in here that just make it explode on my skin. You know, a lot of perfumes struggle in the heat and they die off because, you know, they start evaporating from your skin. But because burger musk is so thick and so oily, it just, it, it laughs in the face of it. Even when you sweat, it just becomes more and more alive. And I think this ties into that, um, you know, the idea of this festival with people dancing and dancing, these beautiful bodies sort of sweating and glistening in, in, in the light, chucking out these wonderful aromas. And that's what Bergamas does. The hotter I get, the more potent it becomes. It seems to really, really re-energize in the heat and it steams up and bounces off your skin and goes everywhere. So in the heat, it's amazing. On a cold, crisp morning, it's very, very comforting because the sea is still there. It just floats around you and keeps you in this wonderful, beautiful bubble that I think makes it perfect for colder days. On a, you know, a mild autumnal day, it's cozy. It just, it's such a, a warming, welcoming scent. It's a real sort of weather chameleon. It can change on the, you know, the spin of a, spin of a coin, it will change how it works, but it's perfect all year round, okay? But really, really, potent in the summer and beautiful all the rest of the year round. So it can be worn all seasons. Okay, and the final question I've been asked is, is it synthetic smelling? Because a lot of people are really into their natural perfume that smell very, very natural. Bergamask is synthetic smelling. It does not smell like you think it's gonna. It doesn't smell like a natural blend of bergamot and orange. It doesn't smell like that at all. There's weird chemicals at play within this, within this perfume. And that makes me have to say, no, it doesn't smell natural. It does smell like a synthetic perfume, but it's done so, so well. So if you are looking for a real natural um, olfactory facsimile of a, of a citrus-based fragrance, Bergamusk is not gonna be for you. It's accurate and it's intense but it does have a synthetic vibe to it, which I think it's meant to have. Um, it's not, you know, it's not been, it's not been created like that by chance, put it that way. Um, but no, it's not a natural smelling perfume. It's an exciting, wildly intoxicating perfume, but it's not a natural smelling perfume. So there you have it. That's 10 questions that have come to me about Burger Musk from you. So there's my answers. And we're gonna keep this on the channel. So obviously, you know, if you've got any, you know, if you've any interest in buying Burger Musk, use this as a reference point, and there you go. But just to close, is, you know, I love this for a reason. Rich loves this for a reason. It's, I mean, it's my number one. It's in Rich's top three of all time. So this is how highly we rate it. Um, so if you have got it and you do enjoy it, please feedback, put your comments under the video so everyone can see what's going on. And if you're looking to try it, please, please do. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you've just bought it, let us know how you get on with it. And if you're waiting for it to arrive, even, even better, let us know what happens when it arrives. 
Anyway, guys, listen, thank you very much. I hope this is going to be a, a sort of a useful tool for you guys. Um, and there you go. So coming back with um, a, another couple of reviews as soon as I can, and um, we'll get them up on the channel. And as always, listen, guys, thank you so much for your support. We really, really appreciate it. And we shall see you on the next video. Cheers, thanks, and... One, two,